Lipid metabolism, beta oxidation, first slide set. In this slide presentation, we will review the preliminary steps of beta oxidation. The purpose of beta oxidation is to metabolize fatty acids by two carbon units. Therefore, during one cycle of beta oxidation, a 16 carbon fatty acid chain will be shorted, shortened by two carbons to a 14 carbon fatty acid chain. The two carbon compound cleaved is acetyl CoA. After the acetyl CoA is cleaved from the process of beta oxidation, it is able to undergo further metabolism through the Krebs cycle. The process of beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondria. Prior to beta oxidation, the fatty acid in the cytosol of the cell needs to undergo a priming phase. In this priming or preliminary phase, the fatty acid is activated by coenzyme A and then joins with a molecule of carnitine. This joining with carnitine allows for the, the shuttling of the fatty acid from the cytosol of the cell into the mitochondria. It is at this point that the fatty acid is ready to undergo the four-step process of beta oxidation. It is important to consider the metabolic environment promoting beta oxidation. Since this process involves the breakdown of fatty acids, it is catabolic and therefore occurs at a higher rate during fasting, particularly during prolonged fasting, and during continuous long duration endurance exercise. Prior to undergoing beta oxidation in the liver or the muscle cell, it will be important to liberate a free fatty acid molecule from a triacylglycerol stored in the adipocyte. In this diagram, portraying the series of events occurring in an adipocyte, there are a series of steps involved in activating the enzyme triacylglycerol lipase, which begins the process of removing each of the three free fatty acids from a triacylglycerol molecule. You see here triacylglycerol being converted to a diacylglycerol and then a monoacylglycerol liberating the free fatty acids. To begin, hormones activating this process of lipolysis, particularly glucagon, epinephrine, or adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH, will need to bind to a receptor on the adipocyte. This hormone receptor binding then activates the series of events needed to activate triacylglycerol lipase. We will now review the series of events activating the triacylglycerol lipase. First, we see that ATP is hydrolyzed to cyclic AMP. This cyclic AMP promotes the conversion of protein kinase from the inactive to the active form. The active form of protein kinase then promotes the phosphorylation of triacylglycerol lipase activating it. You see here the phosphate group bound to the triacylglycerol lipase which is now active. Now that triacylglycerol lipase is active it is able to cleave the ester bond joining a free fatty acid to glycerol. The cleaving of this glycerol bond frees the fatty acid and the triacylglycerol is then converted to a diacylglycerol. From there, diacylglycerol lipase cleaves another ester bond freeing a fatty acid and then the diacylglycerol is converted to a monoacylglycerol. Monoacylglycerol lipase then cleaves the ester bond of the remaining fatty acid leaving the glycerol backbone. 
Here the free fatty acid molecules are available to exit the adipocyte and enter circulation. After leaving the adipocyte, the free fatty acid is available to be picked up by tissues that undergo beta oxidation. The glycerol molecule can also leave the adipocyte and be taken up by the liver. You can see in this diagram, we have the adipocyte, the triacylglycerol. When the triacylglycerol is broken down to the free fatty acid and the glycerol components, these separate components undergo further metabolism. The free fatty acids can be picked up by the liver, muscles, or other tissues undergoing beta oxidation. And the free fatty acids can undergo beta oxidation and further metabolism such as the Krebs cycle. And then the electron transport chain can occur to produce ATP. The glycerol molecule can be picked up by the liver and can be converted to glucose through the process of gluconeogenesis, and that glucose can undergo glycolysis. We will now review the priming phase needed prior to beta oxidation occurring in the mitochondria. Once in the cytosol of the liver or muscle cell, the free fatty acid will go through a series of steps, allowing entry into the mitochondria. In this first step, we see the activation of the free fatty acid by coenzyme A. Here the free fatty acid joins with coenzyme A to become fatty acyl CoA. You can see here also that this step requires the investment of ATP. The next step takes the activated fatty acyl CoA and joins it with a carnitine molecule. With the enzyme fatty acyl carnitine transferase, also known as FACT1. With the joining to the carnitine, the fatty acyl CoA becomes fatty acyl carnitine. The coenzyme A is removed. Keep in mind that this reaction is still occurring in the cytosol. The third step involves the shuttling of fatty acyl carnitine from the cytosol into the mitochondria. You see here the fatty acyl carnitine. The intermembrane protein enzyme translocase catalyzes this reaction. And you see here with translocase, the fatty acyl carnitine becomes shuttled through the mitochondrial membrane into the matrix of the mitochondria. At this point, the fatty acyl carnitine is in the mitochondria. However, the carnitine will need to be removed prior to undergoing beta oxidation. Therefore, in the fourth step, the carnitine group is removed. A coenzyme A is joined to the fatty acid forming again fatty acyl CoA. This last step is catalyzed by fatty acyl carnitine transferase or FACT2. The fatty acyl CoA now in the mitochondria is ready to undergo beta oxidation. You can see a diagram of this last step as well in this slide. You see the fatty acyl carnitine joins with the coenzyme A removes the carnitine and becomes the fatty acyl CoA. And you can see that this enzyme is catalyzed by the fatty acyl carnitine transferase too.